The next thing that we want to do is every photographer now needs a website. And you don't have to spend a lot of money or learn HTML to make a nice looking, professional looking slideshow using Expression Media. I'm going to come up to the Make window and select HTML Gallery. Now I have a number of options here. I'm going to go ahead and give my site a title and call it Jay's Portfolio. And I have a number of themes here from this pull down menu. So, my theme, I'm going to select Blue Delicious. This is one of my favorites. I have my index table. I can control the number of cells and control the spacing. There's a lot of control over the options that you have in your HTML gallery. Thumbnails, I'll keep them on the smaller side. And for the media, I'm just going to scale to fit. And since I'm working on a slightly smaller screen than you are likely, I'm going to go ahead and fit them on 400 by 400. For your actual website, 640 by 640 is probably going to be a good option. When completed, I have the option to launch the browser when finished. But before I do that, I want to go and look at some of these other options. So here in the settings, I have the option to choose whether I want HTM or HTML. I'll go ahead and leave it at the default, HTM. And I also have here my JPEG quality settings. There's always a trade-off whenever you're publishing photos on the web between image quality, which is larger size, less compression, versus quick download speed, which is going to compress the photos a little bit higher, degrade the quality just a little bit. So there's always a happy medium between them. I think the high does a good job. If you have a lot of photos on a page, you may want to bump it down to medium. If you'd like, you can add a watermark here. I, as a personal preference, don't really like to watermark my images online. I also have the option to embed my annotations here into the photographs, just in case someone does grab it off of the website. I know that my copyright and my contact information will travel with it. I can preserve color profiles, my EXIF and GPS metadata. If I have any movies in my HTML gallery, I can autoplay those and display the video controller. Then if I know what my server settings will be, I can type in my FTP server information here and then when, com when completed, automatically upload those files to the server. And Then if I have any theme fields, I can add those here. This is the setting that most photographers aren't going to want to use. So I'll come back to the original and I have my theme chosen. If I like this and this is what I want to use all the time, I can click on this option and save it and I'll call this portfolio. portfolio small images because I know that I've reduced the size of the media to 400 by 400. I'll choose OK here and press make and I'll just put this on my desktop. Press OK and it's begun publishing the HTML gallery. Now that the gallery is finished publishing, I can click OK. Gallery build is completed. And it will automatically launch this in my web browser. So I have my portfolio name here. And you can see the number of images I have here along with their size. And clicking on any image will open this within my web browser. And I can also get a nice size view and have the uh, camera name, my shutter speed, aperture, f-stop, the length of my camera lens, and so forth. And I can navigate frame to frame. And on your computer, this will fit a little bit nicer than it is here that will eliminate the need for scrolling. I have my copyright information down here, which you can see was part of the reason that we want to add that right up front. This really helps tie everything together from the image import all the way through to the end. There's one last thing that I want to show you in, the, in our interactive uses of expression media. And all of us have emailed photos to friends, and all of us have received photos that have been emailed to us. So often, we receive a photo that just can't be displayed on the screen because they, the, the sender never resized the picture. And so we see a little corner of a photograph and have to open it in another application so that we can begin to see what it was that they're sending us. Now, Expression Media makes it really easy to avoid making that mistake. Here's how. I'm going to go ahead and click on this, this image here, and I want to email it to a friend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to my Send Email icon up in the toolbar here. 
click on that and the format is JPEG compressed media that's good if I uncheck that it's going to be in the native format but I don't want to send a layered large layered Photoshop document over the web I want to just compress the media I have my quality options here I'll go ahead and choose high and this is going to give me my size this will be the size of the longest dimension and the short dimension will be scaled proportionally so I can go all the way up to 1280 pixels but 800 or even 640 is a nice size so I'll go ahead and choose that here again if I want to add a watermark I can do that if I want to create multiple emails I can do that as well and add a media summary of everything that's attached I can also embed the metadata and the media attachments and since everything that I send goes out the door with my metadata, I'm going to want to make sure that that's checked. So I'll choose OK. And it prepares the files, adds it to your web browser. So you can see here is the subject and the attached. And I'm just going to go ahead and change this. So I'll just send it to a friend and I have my subject is my great photo of a bison and I can see that it's already been attached and I can say hello I thought you might want to see this photo it's already been resized for me it's web friendly and it's ready to go these are just a couple of the ways that it makes it really easy to do a number of different things with your photos in expression media.